inconsistent conclusion because I've done many clickbait titles that have done phenomenally well in the vlog department. So I don't know if that's it. You gotta space them out though. There's a, there's, a was... cool, there's a cool down on the clickbait. <laughs> that's on the clickbait. Oh, I, I more than well exhausted the cool down. I don't know. Here's, at any rate, here's here's the way I look at it. Hi everyone and welcome to Awesome Hardware. But here's the way I look at it, right? I used to work at Angel Stadium here in Southern California. I was a hawker. I would go and have Kill peanuts or ice cream or peanuts. cotton candy or other stuff, and I walk up and down the aisles and, and, stuff. and yell stuff and sell stuff. Anyway, Angel Stadium, I think the capacity at Angel Stadium is like 24,000. Sure. Something like that. So that's my mental image of like the number of people? people who might be number of views on a video. Sure. So I'm like, if I make a video and a stadium's worth of people viewed it, I mean, granted, it's all relative and everything. No, it, sure. It, but, sure. like, I still got to be happy about that. True. So. I need, I need it, to think more like you. You know, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, that, that's pretty impressive. Although, no, you're right, you're right. Although YouTube hates us and they're not. They're not, they're not pushing our vids, pushing bro. Our they're not pushing our vids at all. Like, YouTube wants us yeah. to die after all we've done for you, YouTube. Why aren't you pushing notifications to my subscribers who have clicked the bell, even? The bell. Uh, and why aren't you, and why that. aren't you, like, promoting both of our videos in the sidebar or in the search? I, I promote just, all the videos. I just don't know why you're trying we, to kill us all. We put so much effort. We do. We care. Speaking of putting effort... Let's get back to what I said a few minutes ago, which is, hello everyone and welcome to Awesome Hardware. If this is your first time ever watching the show, it's probably a bad introduction because we've already drank a few beers and um, we're just going to kind of aimlessly mishmash our way through the rest of the show for now. But I'm going to Kool-Aid it. I can, oh, yeah. I can at least give you guys a quick explanation of what the heck is going on. Every Tuesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, Kyle and I stream a live show and we discuss technology, we talk about computers and everything. Uh, we do it for about two hours. The first hour is streamed to one of our channels, and the second hour is streamed to another of our channels. So on this week's episode 155, we stream, stream the first half, side A, to Kyle's channel. That's linked in the description if you want to check it out. We're now on to side B. Um, that, that pretty much that's, that pretty much sums it up. Again, we we, we do a, a, just a smidge of drinking. We occasionally use adult language, so uh, this is a show intended for adults. So please hide your wife, hide your kids. Uh, you know if they're offended by adult language, and um, feel free to join us in uh, drinking alcohol if you are of age and please drink responsibly, and all that good stuff. Also, at the beginning of the show, we typically like to point out that we sell stuff, and if you like our content that we produce on YouTube or on Twitch, because we are also streaming to twitch.tv slash awesomehardware. Hey, Twitch! Uh, check out our stores. PaulsHardware.net is my store. Look at all these awesome things that you can purchase. Anyway, it's all real high, qual high quality, and uh, it's a great way to support us. You can also buy stuff from Kyle's store. That is bitwit.tech slash store. Did I say my store? Paul, Paul's Hardware.net? Paul's is my store. Bitwit.tech slash store is Kyle's store. And you can buy stuff there too. Word. Um, we'll yell Johnson at shirts, you if you do. Shirts, mugs, pint glasses, hoodies. It's all good. And if you happen to buy stuff during the show, uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the end show, we'll, we'll go through those. And we'll shout your name out and we'll thank you. Be sure. And we'll also yell Johnson. Uh, and it's a great tradition. All right. Let's get uh, back into the, the meat as it mm, were, meat. of of the stuff we're going to discuss today. Back into the tech news. Favorite part of the show. The meat. Yes, indeed, tech news. Tech news! We have to clearly indicate that by the lower thirds, otherwise people get confused. <laughs> uh, starting off with NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards, prices continuing to drop. This is good news. This is absolutely fantastic news. I'm... I'm excited about this because Heck yeah. there's been a lot of like good news and good stuff to talk about in the tech world over the past year or two, especially sure. with AMD kind of coming back with Ryzen and they're just being a little bit more choice, more options, more com more competitiveness, I would say, in, yeah. the, in the desktop space, especially if you're building your own computer. But it's been stymied so much, some, somewhat by high graphics card prices and high memory prices. Right. Memory is still pretty expensive, but it's come down somewhat. But graphics cards, uh, the story is, is a little bit better. Um, yeah. So, 
There are currently several things affecting the graphics card pricing. Rumors of next-gen NVIDIA graphics cards. Rumors of next-gen AMD graphics cards, although whether or not they are rebadges of Polaris variants, we're still not sure about that. Also, cryptocurrency mining, uh, which has been a great contributor to high graphics card prices, uh, demand for that use case has somewhat dwindled, again, for various reasons, but all that has caused prices to drop pretty significantly. Back uh, in March time frame, they dropped by about 25% across the board, but that was really dropping them from like ridiculously overpriced, like, you know, to just $1,000 1080 Ti's and $400 RX 580's right. to like just a little overpriced. And it's like, yeah. oh, I can buy a graphics card for like 20 or 40 bucks over what it originally listed for right. two years ago when it it's launched. Still not but ideal. Felt better, but it, it this, like Kyle said, still not ideal. This right. is a furtherance of that, and um, the article from WCCF Tech that we're referencing here specifically talks about the European market, but that does seem to be affecting U.S. prices too. Yeah. Um, according to the article, this is a trend that's likely likely to continue well into the end of the summer and the back-to-school season as NVIDIA prepares to introduce its new family of gaming GeForce graphics cards and talk of AMD doing the same before the year's end on the Radeon side. So here's a quick rundown of the prices at the end of May. Again, there was a drop in March. There was a month or two or so of kind of stagnation at those prices. And then from the end of May up until now, which is a month and a half, two months, sure. um, prices have dropped by as much as 18%. Some somewhere in the eight to fifteen percent range for other cards nice. listed here: ten seventy, ten eighty, uh, RX Vega fifty six and sixty four. Even this is the first time I've like this is legitimately the first time I've like been like maybe a Vega fifty six <laughs> might be something I can tell people maybe you could buy. Like it's right. never it's never been the case. Yeah, I have never told anyone to buy that to card. buy a Vega fifty six or a Vega sixty four and put it in their system. Right. Like it's a perfectly adequate card, but not for six hundred bucks. Exactly. For a Vega fifty six. Ten seventy was much more reasonably priced yeah, the whole so, through. Yeah. So that's kinda cool. Um and that's just cool. just to reality check it right now, I thought we would quickly jump over to Newegg <laughs> and look at their video cards and video devices and desktop graphics cards and just do what we've done on the show before uh, a time let's or two, which is kind of give a real-time check of pricing. Uh, let's start with the RX 580, ever popular. We only want to look at Newegg prices, and I want to say 8 gigs. Yeah. 8 gig card. Call. Cool. All right. Uh, lowest price, please. Yes. All right. 260, and that's out of stock, so that's not super exciting. <laughs> This is a little for overpriced. A little bit, for a little bit more, you right, can get so one. Maybe people got too excited, yeah. obviously. Uh, let's try the, the Radeon. I'm sorry, the NVIDIA side. Uh, GTX 1070 8 gig. 400? Still out of stock. This is Damn. this is the is this the Amazon? All right, so the cheapest is four seventeen ninety nine for this little gigabyte mini one. That's well, the four, open box. 409. 409, 410 right there. Although that's uh, a mini. details. Oh, you can't add a cart. All right, sorry. Yeah. I got... The, oh, see, I, I saw these view details ones were... All right, so you can get a Zotac 1070 Mini for 400. Add to cart. All right. And that's and that's not even, like, their miniest of cards. Like, it still has a dual fan design and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. All right, so that's... Not bad. That's somewhat reasonable. So good to hear, yeah, and... it's been uh, so long since I've seen a 1070 for 399 Yeah. It's been... Months. I mean, considering that two year. years ago, remember our, our big complaints in the first two three months after launch was that they were like, all right, like fifty bucks over MSRP. Two, what was it? Two seventy nine or two eighty? I'm sorry, three seventy nine or three eighty nine? Yeah. They originally announced MSRP for the ten seventy that it never right. sold for. Right. Um, it's never been it. But yeah. never been MSRP. MSRP is a is a myth. It's a mythical creature. All right. Trying to catch. It's a rare Pokemon. We'll never catch. Moving along, though, uh, Netflix. Investors are apparently a little bit worried about Netflix because it's it's Netflix is it's, dying. It's grown to the the maximum size. Apparently, this is Netflix CEO Reed Hastings, looking very skeptical, extremely <laughs> skeptical. So Netflix missed its subscriber growth targets by about a million subscribers. 
uh, in the three months ending in June, otherwise known as Q2, mm -hmm. uh, April, May, June, there is concern from investors that this might be due to a saturation limit for the streaming platform. Right. Simply put, Netflix has 130 million subscribers, and maybe that's the most it's ever going to get, or just that that's the saturation point where there are as many people subscribing to Netflix as can reasonably do so based on sure. their income and you know spending capacity and, and that kind of thing. Right. Based yep. on this news, this unfortunate news about them missing their growth targets, their stock price fell 14%. Um, and in case you're wondering Thanks. specifically what the growth target is, they projected 6.2 million more subscribers in this three-month period, and they only, only got 5.2 million. And now investors are freaking only 5.2 million subscribers in three months. I wow. I mean, I would be very disappointed with that. <laughs> if, if our YouTube channel, my YouTube uh, channel, that'd be awful. <laughs> that'd be absolutely horrible. Yes, our investors would I mean, be very disappointed in us. Obviously, like Netflix has different, stand, has different standards, and when you're looking at the corporate world, constant growth is is often important. And I'm not going to neg negate the, you know, how that actually affects a business, especially something like net, something like something like ne Netflix. But it still seems like they got lots of subscribers, and they're still very successful. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe this, maybe the stock was overinflated. They've they've got some competition coming their way though. Yes. With HBO so, stepping up their game, Disney. Disney's going to be launching their own streaming service. Apple and Disney both and have Apple. streaming yeah, services that's, that's the other one I was planned of. in the future. Right. That so, are in, anticipated to be huge competitors for streaming services that are already, already existing, such as Netflix. Right. Who, uh, HBO has a very popular streaming platform, and they have proven that you can take. Uh, a relatively small number of shows that are with the focus on quality, and right. you can draw in subscribers with that model. Oh yeah, I mean, um, think of Game of Thrones. Yes, Game you of know? Thrones. How many people are subscribed to HBO just for that show? Mostly. Oh, also Westworld. I mean, Westworld. Oh yeah, I forgot Westworld's HBO too. It's pretty awesome. Okay, two shows, but still. Yeah. Still waiting on the Alt Shift X. Uh, video for the final two episodes of Westworld, but ah, I get distracted once again. The landscape is increasingly looking more like an unbundled version of the old cable model when you look at how people pay for their entertainment. Right. Uh, dozens of channels from Netflix to CBS to Showtime, each with their own monthly fee. Yeah. This is actually a model that I'm personally okay with, because one of the things that if you look at the cable subscri subscription model of the past... Is like, oh, you're gonna get this package for 120 bucks a month, or 160 bucks a month, or something, and you're gonna get 2,500 channels, and they're all bundled in with this and this and this. But it's like, I'd rather pay for what I know I'm gonna watch. Right. So exactly. that's why an ad hoc direct subscription to HBO for HBO Go has made sense for a lot of people because right. they're exactly. like, I know I'm gonna watch those shows. I can directly see the money I spend on that being brought back to me by the value I get from, mm -hmm. from watching that, and it's, right. worth, and it's worth the money. Yeah. So, this is why the next story we're going to talk about in a second about net neutrality sort of feeds back into this, which is that, like, I'm perfectly happy paying a base fee for a solid broadband internet connection, which in my humble opinion should be around 40 bucks a month, 40, 50 bucks a month, if it's not bundled, bundled with anything. Yeah. Um... And then, on top of that, you might be spending X dollars amount a month for a Netflix Netflix subscription or whatever other subscription you might be putting on top of that. And then you get a few of those in there, and then you've kind of reached your saturation point for how much content you can actually watch. Right. And bear in mind that a standard internet connection will also get you a connection to YouTube, as well as a bunch of other streaming services that you don't yep. have to pay a monthly, monthly fee for, and you probably... Yep doing okay when it comes to having stuff to point at your eyeballs to distract you from your constant yeah uh, the, the, the constant hellish existence that you actually live through <laughs> the fact that death comes well, to us all gently after, put, gently says <laughs> that the cold hand the cold and icy hand cold of, of, fate. of death <laughs> doom grasping for us every moment of the day to, cl to clutch at us and, and, and draw us down into a 
another realm of pain and <laughs> suffering, sorrow, and forever, and hatred. Yep. But that's why we sub- subscribe to Netflix. That's exactly why. And that should be their model of marketing yeah. scheme message. Netflix will spend as much as $8 billion producing and acquiring TV shows and movies this year, including Disenchantment from The Simpsons and Futurama, Futurama mm-hmm. creator Matt Groening, mm-hmm. uh, as well as new seasons of House of Cards mm-hmm. and Making a Murder. House of Cards. Very popular show. Even despite Kevin Spacey's alleged sexual harassment claims. Is it still alleged? I feel like that was. Pretty, I mean. <laughs> I mean, I was being conservative, the, but yes. Yeah, uh, but right. who the like? Uh, what now? If there's been any jury trials yet, so Are I guess technically a... you're still supposed to say that. But, sure. Um, anyway. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Let's move on. Sure. I don't. I don't. I don't really have any final summation <sighs> to give to that story. So let's quickly talk about net neutrality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've 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 discussed this on the show simply because. We deal with technology, we deal with the internet, and we personally feel that net neutrality is a good thing. And that if you pay for a connection to the internet, that your internet service provider should have no place in telling you uh, or in telling you what services or websites you can connect to or not connect to, or charging you more for this or less for that, or throttling certain connections to certain points in the internet. Right. Now the FCC right now has really gone the other way according to stuff that we were kind of excited back about back in 2005. Uh, so people hate Ajit Pai um, pretty universally, in my experience, but that yep. doesn't mean that there is no way to fight back. So amongst the ways to fight back, we have had a lot of states introducing their own net neutrality laws, uh, but there's also been some action on the federal level. So there is a bill intended to save net neutrality specifically that has already gone through the Senate and now actually has its first Republican vote in the U.S. House. Oh, yes. Now, we try not to get into a bunch of, like, politics and Republicans versus Democrats and the contentiousness of U.S. US politics, especially right now on the show. All we try to say here is that, as we've stated, we have a stance on net neutrality. For whatever We're for it. For whatever reason, it seems to be the Republican side of it that's, like, really against that. So... Boggles the mind. I hate to say, that, like we're against re- the Republicans. We're, we're against the Republican stance on this. We're not getting into further politics beyond that. But it is heartening that U.S. Rep. Mike Kaufman from Colorado uh, announced uh, today. Oh, that was today. Uh, his support for this bill. Um, there are currently 176 Democrats and one Republican on board. They need 41 more votes in order to uh, get this to have any legs in the House. Uh, the, what the reps are actually signing is a discharge petition that would force the House to vote on a Congressional Review Act resolution. The resolution would reverse the FCC's repeal of the net neutrality rules that went into effect uh, a month or two ago. Right. Senate approved... The CRA resolution back in May, with votes from all members of the, Dem- the, the Democratic caucus and three Republican senators. So three Republican senators voted with the Democrats in order to get that through the Senate. Now it's up to the House to move things forward. And again, there's a long way to go, but it is at least some beam of light, some some silver lining on the cloud. There is at least one uh, Republican uh, congressman who's been who, who's been convinced to sign on with this hopefully there will be more uh, because the petition needs 218 signatures total and right now the Republicans hold a 236 to 193 majority in the house I really hope that the one Republican who joined on board is like a likable Republican among his colleagues and that some of them will come to their senses and side with him because sometimes it's all it takes sometimes like everyone's thinking the same thing but they're not actually going to make a move until one person does. And then they're like, oh, he actually stepped up to the plate and was brave enough to take a stance on this. And then they feel a bit more confident in doing the same because somebody's already led, trailed that path. So I would hope in my internet-loving nature that more Republicans join join the net neutrality side. What it comes Because to, of this one, like, so, one switch. So what it comes down to for me... If you're trying to have this net neutrality discussion with somebody and it comes down to a a sort of a partisan political discussion, 
in my mind, or at least in my my concept of of, the, of a conservative Republican stance on this particular issue, would be a pro business stance. Right. And in my mind, one of the great amazing things that the internet has done has allowed many businesses, especially small businesses, to grow and thrive thanks to the access. I mean, Kyle and I both have small businesses based on the internet. Thanks to the access that's pro that's allowed through the internet. Sure. Large companies having the ability to shut off certain parts of the internet so that smaller businesses that are involved with that part of the internet, you suddenly might have to pay extra money for or something, is not a good thing. Right. So, in my mind, if you're pro-business, you should be pro-internet and you should be pro-net neutrality because that allows a level playing field for anyone, no matter how small their business is or how large their business is, to equally access anyone who is on the internet. And, and that, that has always made sense to me. That's been sort of the, the fundamental discussion that I've had with, with a few people right. when it comes to like net neutrality, especially people who say like, oh, this is all about regulation. Regulation and government regulation and government regulations are bad and everything. It's like the internet is regulated. It it has been regulated. It's always been regulated by the government since it's since it, from DARPAnet onwards. It's going to be regulated in some way, and the, the discussion is how. And net neutrality, to us, is the obvious answer. But anyway, uh, let's move on from yeah. this because dwelling on it too long gets people upset. All right. <laughs> ASRock has been updating, or has released updates for their X399 Tai Chi motherboard to support future Threadripper CPUs. Nice! So this is not a new X399 Tai Chi motherboard, this is their existing X399 Tai Chi motherboard. Which launched back when X399 launched. It's a good little, mo good little motherboard. I uh, built with this motherboard in my entry level Threadripper uh, build because it's one of the cheapest X399 boards that you yes. can buy. Right. Uh, and it still has pretty much all the features that you'd, you'd want when it comes to connectivity and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so the upshot to this article is really that um, Threadripper processors are going to be backwards compatible with existing X399 motherboards. That seems to be the case. Sure. With a BIOS update, you will have support for the 24-core 2950X, which should be coming out, or the 32-core 2990X. The question that's raised in this article, and I'm sure will be raised by other people, is going to be when it comes to what frequencies those processors ship at, and then in particular when it comes to overclocking those processors, because we have to assume that AMD is going to continue to make them unlocked for overclocking, just as they've done with pretty much all of their mainstream and high-end desktop processors. Right. Like, all of them, which, which is cool. That's good. We approve of that. Yeah. But existing X399 motherboards have power delivery that's made for a 16-core <clears throat> processor. The additional power needs of a 24-or-32-core 24 24 or core processor, sure. especially if overclocked, might be more than what these were designed for when they were only thinking up to 16 cores. Sure. That said, it does seem like there will be backwards compatibility. ASRock has released this 3.0 BIOS for their X399 Tai Chi motherboard, uh, which delivers the AMD Summit PI-SP3R2 1.1.0.0. Uh, I think this is an AGISA code to the platform to support AMD upcoming processors. And we know that that is Threadripper 2 because that's what AMD has promised will launch in August. To update their BIOS, ASRock uh, has released both their new, new 3.0 UEFI, so a new UEFI design, and a version 2.3 bridge BIOS, which means that the X399 Tai Chi requires two separate BIOS updates to become ready for Threadripper 2, hmm. uh, for Threadripper second generation products. Hmm. So, you know, not a huge deal or anything, but kind of interesting that they actually have to do an update from an existing BIOS to a bridge BIOS, and then an update from that BIOS to the actual BIOS in yeah. order to get it ready for this. Two updates. Uh, for, for the new processors. Hmm. And 
I'm sure there'll be lots of tests on existing X399 motherboards, but also there's going to be new updated X399 motherboards coming out when Threadripper 2 launches next month. So we'll, we'll hopefully have some coverage of all that. Yeah, that's, that's going to be an interesting video to see if second gen Threadripper performs the same on the newer X399 boards that came after its launch. Uh, as opposed to the existing X399 boards like the Tai Chi here. Because um, I, I think it all depends on what angle the AMD engineers are, are, are coming at uh, with second gen Threadripper. If, you know, because they could easily say, like, okay, yeah, we've got a 32, 32 core processor on our hands that we're going to be launching. They might think, you know, I would hope that they would uh, take into consideration that there are existing X399 users that might be dropping this newer gen CPU into their bo existing boards um, and thinking how do we optimize the power delivery in such a way or the efficiency of this chip so that X th existing X399 users have uh, an indistinguishable experience from the newer X399 board owners. Um, or they could just be like, or, or, or they could go the other route where, you know, nope, you know, we, we want to have a little bit of Headroom. We want to have a little bit of benefit performance-wise and power delivery-wise with a newer X399 boards to promote these newer boards. Sure, they'll work just fine on the older X399 boards, but um, that could be something that set, further distinguishes the newer and the older X399 boards from each other. So it really just depends on the sort of angle and direction that the AMD engineers are coming from, I think, when they're, when they're designing this second-gen Threadripper uh, family. I think for me it'll, it'll just be a matter of how much the higher core count processors are potentially held back by the first generation motherboards, if they are at all, and if, I right. mean, I imagine there will be some, especially if you're taking overclocking into account. Sure. But, um, yeah, as, as, this is a reasonable time, I mean, several people have suggested this, but I've never said it directly, since I've been working on this Riptide build, yes. I have every intention of upgrading Riptide to the 32 core 2990X when it becomes available. Kyle's, Kyle's it's looking good. over there. Yeah, it's looking good. I, 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 I'm like ready to finish the loop right now. I would have done it earlier today, but I ran out of time. Are so. you doing soft tubing or hard, hard so, lines? Soft. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's looking good so far with that little. Yeah, I've got, I've got one, I've got one tube installed in there so far. Yeah. Um, Why did you decide to go soft? Just curious. Because I want it to be functional. And actually, one of the things I'm kind of looking forward to is if Threadripper 2 comes out and there's new motherboards, like, I'm making no assumptions here, but if ah. Asus makes a new Zenith, like a second generation, second generation Zenith, and they provide me with that, and then AMD provides me with a 2990X... I am really excited to swap those in because I will be able to do it so easily with my soft tubing and my quick disconnects as opposed to True. having to disassemble an entire loop and drain stuff. Like yeah. I wouldn't have to drain anything. I can quick disconnect stuff to take the block off and everything. Um, but yeah, intending to hopefully upgrade to the 32 core. Not sure if the motherboard upgrade will be required or not, but if it is, I'll definitely go for that. And then I will probably switch to a mono block as well. Because um, right now the uh, CPU block I have is not ideal. It's, Why isn't it ideal? Because uh, it wasn't designed for Threadripper. Ah. It's one of those ones that would like, like the Ace Tech coolers that were designed for Intel and mainstream CPUs that you could put an adapter on and mount to a Threadripper processor and would cool it okay, but you discover that when you actually switch up the block design to something that's specifically that's larger to actually go over all the dies and everything that suddenly you actually get much better cooling so hmm. yeah that's, sure. that's, that's, that's my plan okay do you mind if I tweet a picture of it right now oh yeah go for it I've already done that okay I mean as long as there's no horrible no there's nothing incriminating on there okay alright no incrimination I just tweeted a picture of in, go, in progress for go like no. Kyle's picture. Do it. All right, one last news story here. Samsung has revealed the world's first LPDDR5 class 10 nanometer DRAM. LP, does that mean low profile? Actually, it means low power. 
power. Uh, low power. The other low LP. Power, low power DDR5. Other LP from across the yard. So these little individual chips, as you can see right there. Uh, so they've added this 8 gigabit LP DDR5 DRAM to their product lineup. So each of these chips is basically 1 gigabyte Gigabool. of memory. Um, which expands their lineup and also improves uh, from the older generation LP DDR4 to LP DDR5. So kind of like the upgrade from DDR3 to DDR4. Sure. Uh, upgrading from LP DDR5, upgrading from LP DDR4 to LP DDR5 mm -hmm. uh, provides higher data rates, lower levels of power consumption, as you might expect, uh, which means they're great for mobile devices. Um, also, like, I have no idea, I, 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 I don't want to speculate much on, like, production or whatever, but, um, if they're suddenly able to pump this out and it's great for, for mobile devices, then, you know, I, I have no idea, but maybe, like, in my head, I think, oh, maybe that will lessen the demand for the memory that's been conflicting and causing, like, really high memory prices on the, hmm. on the C, on the, the DRAM, the, uh, the, you know, yeah, the desktop, the DRAM, desktop side. DRAM side. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. But, Potentially. But, but the, the thought, you know, that's not outside the realm of possibility. Sure. But this move from LP... Uh, but I don't want to say that, like, you could take something that's designed for LPDDR4 and take one of these and just drop it in. That's probably not the case. Sure. But let's move on. Uh, All right. These new 8 gigabit chips offer data rates up to 6,400 megabits per second. That's significantly faster than their highest-end LPDDR4X memory, which does 4,266 megabytes a second. That's a, nice. that's a nice jump. 4,200 to 6,400. Wow. It's like another, that's a 33%-ish jump. Yeah. Uh, to start, they're going to ship memory with speeds of 6,400 megabits per second and 55 mega, 5,500 megabits per second, uh, operating at 1.1 volts and 1.05 volts. And then they expect this memory to power future AI and 5G mobile applications, as well as, of course, probably going to be a lot of smartphones. Bones. Yep. Lots of smartphones. Bones, baby. Cool. So yay, new memory. Fucking Samsung. Memory. All right, uh, let's let's move on. Let's 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 move into our next segment. All right, what do we got All next? Right, we're gonna do some sword fight. Sword fight. Yay! Uh, I feel like we haven't done a sword fight in a while. Classic sword fight. It's been a while. All right. Uh, on Kyle's half of the show, we already started discussing this, and so we're going to Ooh. assume that you have watched that and have some basis on this. But uh, yeah. to quickly recap, Virtual Link is a new USB-C based cable. Uh, with a new protocol, Virtual Link, which gives a little bit more bandwidth than uh, your Thunderbolt connection, in order to provide a single cable for both the USB as well as the video connection from a VR headset. So a standardized connection for v VR headsets and one that has been embraced by quite a few companies, including NVIDIA and AMD and Microsoft. Microsoft. And Oculus, Oculus and HTC, and HTC and so yeah. like all the big players in VR right now. So instead of having something like this with a power and a USB and an HDMI, the cable set, for Clunky. example, that you need a Vive to connect with right now, cumbersome. You will simply have a single USB Type C connector. <laughs> like how you scroll to a very complicated looking graph. Right this, is an end, <laughs> this is an this is an tech article, which means they get into a bit more of the uh, the, the the details of it. Sure. But, but it's going to be a single Type C connector. Yes. So here, One are, the, type -C. here are the different modes. Uh, it's basically like a Display Port connection, giving you three, 32.4 gigabits per second. Right. Uh, That's just for, for the video, video bandwidth. Right. Plus an additional 10 for USB 3. Sure. Uh, and high speed lane pairs. And then and power's power. included in that yeah. connector as well. So that's important. Type C can carry 27 watts. You, you have watts. to be able to power like a headset or something like that. Right. Okay. So what are we arguing today? If this is going to be better for VR, so here's or? a question. Like we did a we did a decent amount of VR stuff a sure. couple, couple years back. We got our, our our Oculus Rifts and our HTC Vibes. Yep. Didn't really grab on. Like you know, there's not a lot of people still building. Like here's a VR yeah. build or whatever. Right. 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 Like it was. It's it's kind of not Very to niche. say Very people niche. don't use it or anything, but it's niche. Very niche. And it's not something that seems to have caught on big time. So here's the question. Is this going to change that? Is Virtual Link and the fact that this hardware solution is not going to be more streamlined with a single cable, 
will that affect the adoption of VR? Are we going to see more VR headsets sold? Are we going to see more people into VR in general because of this? Is VR going to take off, basically, in the way that people were maybe expecting a couple years back with the initial launch of those headsets, now that this new standard has been adopted? What do you think? Okay, I'm going to go the easy route and give you the burden of, of arguing devil's advocate. Uh, I'm going to say that no, VR had its chance as a dead fringe technology, which is only semi-true of what I believe. I don't think that this standardization, this new spec, will be the thing that convinces people, that, that finally makes VR go mainstream. I, I think it's more than that. I think it's the... Um, the amount of horsepower and processing power that's required to drive full and rich VR experiences that's the bigger wall between the mainstream consumer and VR. Um, you, need, you need a pretty decently either mid-range to high-end gaming PC to run these excellent VR experiences smoothly. Um, and I don't think that, you know, when... You know, we've discussed this in the past where like you know VR is not really taken off like a lot of people speculated um, we never once brought up the cable situation well it's you know because you got USB and HDMI and power that you all got to plug in simultaneously that was never brought up it was always the, the, the biggest barrier to entry for VR was always the price that came with the headset itself with the whole ecosystem and the PC that was required to drive it uh, so I think that this is a good step forward. I think that standardization for this type of thing is a good thing overall, and it will prove beneficial in the long run, but I don't think it's going to get us uh, many steps closer to wide, widespread adoption of VR. I think um, optimization needs to happen, and uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's, yeah, optimization needs to happen, you know? Um, People need to be able to, to run this on their old pre-built Dell systems in order for it to be mainstream, because that's the mainstream computing system that most people have right now. Uh, and granted, I'll, I'll give HTC and Oculus a bone because they have dropped the prices of their headsets pretty significantly since their first launch, but you still need the hardware to drive them. So. Sorry. Your move. I, Your move. You, you mentioned that, and um, I, I, I think. Uh, Paul's looking up facts, and he's cheating. No, I saw. He's cheating for face-off. I saw. Or for I saw. Sword fight. I saw an ad today for Oculus Rift Plus touch controllers for like two hundred and fifty bucks or something ridiculous like that. It looks like it's still four hundred, but anyway. Obviously, Kyle's wrong. He said he said no, but uh, yes, actually, yes. Um, once Virtual Link becomes standardized, we will see a renaissance in uh, the VR space. In fact, you know, Kyle mentions a, a good point. He brings up a good point when it comes to the, the barrier to entry to VR and uh, needing a high-end PC, but really that's been essentially eliminated by the reduced prices of graphics cards recently we just discussed earlier in the show the 80 percent reduction in price in graphics cards just recently so obviously everyone now has a really powerful gaming pc with a high-end graphics card like gtx uh 1066 gig or an rx 588 gig or above which is perfectly capable of playing vr so that's that's not an issue not not really a problem anymore really what it comes down to is the immersion and people's level of, uh, you know, the, 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 the amount of joy or value that they get out of the VR experience, and often that was detracted from, or people would often complain about being pulled out of the VR experience because they're suddenly tripping over a cord or something like that because they've got this bulky set of cords coming off of their headset that has to go over and be con connected to the PC. This will not be the case anymore. We have a simple, slim, USB Type-C cable it could easily be routed up over the head. Um, you know, it's not going to be tugging on you all the time or anything like that. So this is going to be the catalyst, I think, that uh, really spurs a new era of VR adoption. Um, we're going to see a lot more people playing VR games. We're going to see 
developers developing VR games. VR porn. It's gonna be it's gonna be better and more awesome than anyone could ever have imagined before. And anyone who says otherwise hates America. <laughs> and babies. <laughs> and, ba- and babies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's, uh... <laughs> compelling. Compelling, right. compelling arguments. Before... Oh. Thank you. Before we see how much our arguments have swayed your opinion, we're going to quickly take a look at the next question, because okay. it's slightly less serious, so we can argue that more quickly, hopefully. All right. Summer question, though. Summer question. This has come up for me recently, because I've been playing uh, Overwatch a decent amount with my wife. Mm-hmm. But if it is summer, and it is hot, and you're playing a PC, and you're gaming in a room, and it gets hot... Sometimes you have two choices, maybe based on the cost of electricity, or maybe simply based on like the fact that you don't want to trip a breaker or something like that. You can either keep the AC on and the computer off, or vice versa. But PC gaming and AC at the same time, maybe that's not a maybe that's not le- a legitimate option for you. So wait, why wouldn't that be a legitimate option? Just don't 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 ask the question why. <laughs> We're not asking why. We're I just, can't ask why. We're just saying. Okay. In this hypothetical situation, if you okay. had to choose gaming without air conditioning in the summer, or air conditioning but no gaming in the summer, what would you choose? Why and, not both? And everyone, okay. everyone, feel free to go ahead. All right. I went first last time. So you can go first well, this well, time. We got to get the results from the first question. Sure. Obviously, VR. Let's see what you guys thought about this one. <laughs> everyone has tried VR porn. But our votes are actually very close. Very close. I almost wow. Here on myself. <laughs> uh, very close, but yes. Wow. It looks like I win, Kyle. Wow. People would totally be into VR if there was just one annoying tether cable instead of that. Group See, of it's of the them. way you phrased it, though. Of course. It's the phrasing. Because that, I that obviously matters. because I obviously knew which one you were going to choose, <laughs> given that you had to free this, range. This sounds like the presidential election of the. <laughs> Of, of America that's, right that's now. That's true. true. What was Russia's involvement in this straw poll? All right, so I win, <laughs> and everyone is way in, too into VR porn. But let's get back to the summer question. All right. Gaming with a, a gaming but no AC. Or AC with no gaming. AC but no gaming. Oh God. What about? Can you have a fan? Can you have a fan blowing on you? Can you? Uh, is there air I'm cooling? Not, I, don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get that far. <laughs> All right, you argue first. That's a good question, though. Uh, <laughs> this is the first question. Right. It's the only question. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go based on what we've actually been doing, and I'm gonna say, you know what? Gaming with no AC. <laughs> because you don't. You don't really believe that. Hear me out here. Hear Deep me out down, here. you don't really. Believe Obviously, that. our viewers, you know, you know, they're hard workers. They probably got the day job. Day jobs. They're not gaming during the day, you know. You 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 gotta get your work done during the day. You gotta work before you get your pl- get your play in. So in the evening, sun goes down. Sure, it's summer. Sure, it's still hot. But when the sun goes down, you gotta turn the AC off. You gotta open up your windows, turn on your fans, get some airflow through the house, and then you can still game. Sure, it's a little warm, but you know you you gotta look past that, and you, you gotta remember that when when you're warm. It increases your reaction time, your your deductive skills, critical critical reasoning capabilities, as well as uh, as well as well as uh, um, technical. You know, it's, right. it's it's pretty warm in here right now, and Paul's having a hard time finishing his Shut sentence. No, no, so no. Just just let that sink in. For All a these things help you. <laughs> they help you when you're feeling warm. You know, you you're, you have you're more spot. You're you're looser, right? You're looser. So, you're playing your your first person shooter, or whatever. You're gonna get get more headshots. You're gonna be an overall better performer. Okay. It's like why people go into a sauna. You know, people go into a sauna. Play games. Improves their gaming skills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obvious. Ninja. You know, very like all, all the big, all the big ones. A to B thing. They're all so, so there you go. Game so and you know. No. All right. I, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong, Paul. Um, clearly, you're going to have to put PC gaming on hold just temporarily. You don't have to give it up for for life. Um, but 
you know what? When it's when it's really hot inside, it's sometimes not worth it because PC gaming is only, only fun when it's fun, and you can't enjoy something when you're miserable. And I know, at least for me, like I'm a sweaty person in general, and when things are hot, I can't enjoy anything. I'm irritable. I need there to be a cool environment in order for me to enjoy anything in life. And especially if, if I'm going to go hard, if I'm going to go hard, and I, if I'm really going to PC game, you have to consider that the, 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 the system you're gaming on is going to generate additional heat that's going to be brought into your room, unless you have some sort of balls to the wall system that exhausts the hot air from your system outside, which 99.9% .9 of us don't have. So that's going to increase ambient temperatures even further. And... The last thing you want is like sweat literally dripping off of your eyebrows into your eyes like you, the saltiness just like having to wipe it out like your KD ratio is going to plummet in those types of, of conditions. Uh, that's why you, you, anytime you go to like an esports event or like a LAN tournament or something like that, they have pretty decent cooling because they understand this is an important facet of PC gaming is comfort. That's why we spend hundreds of dollars on gaming chairs and high display refresh rate monitors and so forth. It's because comfort is everything. That that's we we enjoy not seeing sunlight. We can go days, weeks without seeing the sun because we're comfortable. And you can't do that when you're smoldering in the freaking heat. Doesn't matter how good at gaming you are, you're gonna be miserable. Didn't you just do a video recently on just building a computer? A, a fan. Oh, oh shut <laughs> up! No one asked you your opinion, Paul. <laughs> you just shut your trap. Right. <laughs> it's nothing to do with it. I have a feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling. I know what the results are going to be here because <laughs> we, of course, have Porque no los dos. Porque no los dos. Uh, but the results are PC gaming with no AC. And yet again. Oh, the sweep. The <gasps> sweep. Oh. Only 24% of people are willing to give up PC gaming Clearly for the comfort not. of the air conditioning. Clearly was not enough. Obviously you're not dedicated enough to the PC gaming cause, Cal. Apparently not. Apparently many, not. But many, you know what? I'll be cool while I'm doing it. Many so. people many people are disappointed. Yeah, that's okay. But, you know, I'm a little disappointed that's in that. That's what the show is all about, is learning, learning, mutual. learning more about me and Kyle. <laughs> our it's all about us. Comings and goings and whatnot. All right. Mostly the coming. That is all for Sword Fight. And Yay. now we have all right. some mail time. Mail time. Yeah, i got to update this. Hold on. Hold on. Mail time. Okay. Mail time. All right. Let's, let's grab the shit. I've got a few. we got a few back here. Right here. All right. These are all sent to my P.O. box. Sorry, hero. If you want to send something to my P.O. box and have it opened on awesome hardware during mail time, Send your cool shit to Paul's Hardware, P.O. Box 4325, Diamond Bar, California, 91765. If you want to send cool stuff to Kyle, then look in the video description of my YouTube videos. You don't know your P.O. Box name off the top of your head? I'm, I'm trying to remember it right now off the top. It's, nine, no, P.O. Box 14. Oh, shit. I don't remember it. I'm blanking. I'm blanking. I usually know it, but I, I'm blanking right now. It's very unfortunate, Kyle. Shut up. Here, I, I'm going to get it right in a second. Oh, wait. Seriously, hold on. Uh, okay. P.O. Box 1449. That's what it is. P.O. Box 1449 in La Mirada, California. 90638. Of course I'm awesome. I'm Paul. Is what the shirt says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, be honest. Will you wear this every day for yes, the rest of your I life? Might, I might wear that. Out in public? I yes, could, you will. I can wear that. Where is this from? This That's is from excellent. the shipping department. That is excellent. PE shipping department. I have no idea. Wow, a whole shipping That's department thinks made. you're excellent. I see that. Yeah, it's uh, great. It's great. So somebody sent me a it's shirt. Good font, too. It's good font. Is it a, oh, it's a size large. They know your size. That's not creepy, but very, very convenient. Awesome. Thank you to whoever sent this. I have no idea where that came from. So this is, uh, there was no message in here. It says, easy DIY easy fab, DIY. made this, in China. This is an Amazon shipment. So somebody, I think, oh, yeah? ordered this from Amazon and had it sent. Just had it shipped here. Okay. Which could very well mean that it's just, it's just some random 
RGB fans. RGB fans. It's a set Yay. of three RGB fans. Ah, free. Probably with like a built-in controller or something, free but. Free advertising for Easy DIY. Easy DIY FAB. Whatever. Yeah, it's got a controller and everything. Little actual, like, remote. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. RGB fans. Someone someone thinks that you lack RGB somehow. I have, I have so many RGB fans. Right. It's really not even funny. Somehow someone thinks you're. Alright. You need this. This one I know is from an actual fan. I'm tr sorry, I shouldn't. Oh, it's sent from a P.O. box, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Andrew Schweier. Schweier! Sent this over. Damn it, Schweier. I feel like he was. He was. Uh, Damn this it. came from Canada. Um, so I'm not sure what the deal is with this. I feel like he's been threatening to send us stuff for a little bit. Is there anything really important? Here. Oh, okay. Oh. Hi, Paul and Kyle. I've sent you the 6600K that I talked about a few awesome hardwares ago. I know I've tried to test it and get it to work, but I'm lacking the diversity of hardware to accurately test and finalize its depth. I'm still hopeful that it works, but if it's dead, what better place to send it than the CPU collection slash graveyard? I'm looking forward to hearing back on the auto autoply report either through my email or my Twitter. Cheers, Andrew Schwab. Yes, yeah, so Andrew has sent us 6700K. Old and potentially dead. That he believes, yeah, has died. I5 6600K. Oh, 6600K. 6600K. Aha. So we were gonna we're gonna get right we're gonna get right to testing this. Absolutely. Immediately after the show. You should test it, because if it works, then hey, you got a free sixty six hundred yeah, can sell it for probably a decent profit. If you sign it. It's even got like original thermal pastes included as part of the package here, which I go. appreciate that. Gives it some authenticity. I'm not sure why there's a red sticker on it. But uh it's I don't see any immediate to indicate it's physical explosive. damage to it though, so maybe it maybe it maybe it is just fine. Could be. Thank you, Andrew. Goodbye. We will... Ah! Sorry. <laughs> it grazed my nose. We'll totally, we'll totally get that figured out for you. Is that mail time? That is mail time! Okay, cool. That was pretty quick. Uh, yeah. I Because I forgot to swing by my PO box. Kyle didn't go Otherwise by his PO have box. A few more. Maybe, Otherwise, um, we might have more. Perhaps next week. Feel um, free to send us more stuff. So, are we going on to donations More mail now? time in the future, yes! Cell donations. processing, our good friend and moderator. Donated oh. five dollars, so I will be thirty-nine next week, meaning I will be dead oh, soon. Happy obviously. birthday, Cell! So here is five dollars to show my affection. Also, I gave Kyle five last week, so it's your turn. Cell, so, happy, happy early, birthday, man! Happy early birthday! You don't look a day over thirty-nine. So and thirty-nine, you I mean, Perfect. thirty-nine is way. You're still very young. It's, it's yeah. like you're not even forty yet. Yeah. You have a whole year ahead of you. <laughs> Before you're old. Before you're actually. <laughs> Like on death's door. Before you're old and no one cares about you. I say this knowing that I'm not that much younger than you. <laughs> so you're next. Uh, yeah, I'm old, and, old and crotchety. Uh, well, thank you very much. Thank Sal. you, Sal. Sal's our moderator. He's, you, he's awesome. He, we love him. He love does Sal. all his he's stuff for us. Bazinga, Bazinga. X. Fifty dollar. Rampage six extreme motherboard. Bucks. Four eight gigabyte sticks of RAM. Dim slot. C1 is dead. I put all four sticks in slots B1, B2, A1, and A2. Windows sees all 32 gigs of RAM. Any issues with RAM this way while I wait on a new motherboard? By the way, Kyle, I am not rich. Money I give is from a part-time job. No offense taken. Oh. Until you mentioned that at the last bit. No, uh, Bazinga, fine. no, I think you're fine. As we kind of talked about earlier in the show or in Kyle's half, um... There are some motherboards that specifically require you to use a first bank and a second bank of RAM slots for uh, your for your dual channel support or your quad channel support or whatever yeah, you might have. But there's also plenty of motherboards that are like, hey, you can use these four slots or you can use these four slots. And it looks like you're it sounds like you're just using the four slots that don't include the one that has a bad dim slot. So I think you're I think you're good. Word. Uh, yeah. I'm the doctor, 499. Kyle, if you put Lyle in the title, I bet you'd get so, so many views. Probably not accurate. Yeah, yeah. Also, congrats on 1 million. Thank you very much. Paul, can't wait for the next time you grow uh, the beard. Oh, thank you. I'm the doctor. I'll probably grow the beard in November again. I've been grow doing that, that for November. 
I like, kind of like the beard. Yeah, I'll but I totally you. forgot this this entire show was supposed to be a celebration of me hitting 800,000 subscribers. Oh, yeah, congrats. I <laughs> noticed that today. <laughs> Just <laughs> briefly, I was like, <laughs> pull hit 800K. It jumped up. I thought it wasn't going to happen for a few more days. Right. But I, but I did like a, a sort of not very well publicized um, a giveaway on a video earlier ah. from last week. Oh, okay. But it... There, there was a big Take jump in subscribers. So. Yeah, quietly passed 800. Well, congratulations. Thank you. That's thank awesome. Thank you. 800K is a good number. Congrats on a million. Hell yeah, thank you. That's um, cool. cool. Uh, Adam Arkwright for 10 bucks. Hey guys, just uh, finished my first build a few weeks ago. Thanks to you. Just want to know what would be a good monitor to game on. Should I get a 144 hertz monitor? Thank you. I'll see you guys at Comic Con. Oh, cool. Cool. We'll see you there. Um, it's hard to say if 144 hertz monitor would be worth it to you if we don't know the graphics card that you're rocking. Um, if you have a 1066 gig, a 588 gig, or, or a 1070 or above, oh, or above, then it might be worth investing in a 144 hertz monitor. I would say 2560 by 1440 is the resolution you should go for. Yeah, because that's really cool. High refresh rate gaming is is really cool. It's yeah. one of the things you can do with PC gaming that you really can't with any other with consoles or anything like that. 1440 is just so nice. And even 1440 when you're not is a really solid... Even when you're not gaming. Better than 1080 resolution that can handle higher refresh rates. It doesn't need a crazy so. high-end graphics card to, to push. Yeah. So that's what I would look for. Yep. Thank you very much, Adam. Hi, save $10. Hello, guys. Second donation here, so you got 15 from me. Thanks, Hi, So safe. would you drink something else other than beer if I sent it to you? I am... I am all for challenges. He says he's 15 years in recovery. Wow. Hi, Safe. In recovery from I'm guessing from cancer? A, from alcohol. Oh, from alcohol. Would, would be my guess. Ah, yes. Then send us all of the alcohol you didn't drink before you came became sober. Uh, <laughs> that sounds I, terrible. I, that sounds I'm, like a good I'm mostly offer. stick to beer, and a lot of it is is just because like when I drink hard alcohol, it's it's too much too fast and yeah it's, yeah it gets dangerous right i'm not opposed to drinking other stuff sure um congratulations and please please do keep it up if you're 15 yeah. years in recovery and um you've got your i don't Little know when you're, when you're in a you get a coin and stuff like that but i don't know if you're involved with, with that kind of thing but um but yeah that's awesome honestly this is the thing that whenever we talk about drinking on the show and stuff i feel the most like self-conscious or remorse about or whatever is like when people are I, struggling with it. I know there are people who struggle with with drinking too much sure and I never want to be someone who's like enabling that sure or whatever so sure. I don't I don't know but <laughs> I mean yeah I, but we're not we're not advertising that you drink often um, that's, that's hopefully why we, we try to say we always say drink responsibly show, to please do it responsibly right only do it if you're of age and right. honestly if you're in a situation where you can't because sometimes people right. you know if you've handled all your stuff right. and you've got some leisure time then that's okay yeah um so sorry hey, yeah, but, uh, i don't want to go t too far down that road but uh thank you hi safe yeah thanks man and yes we would drink something other than beer we'll try anything it. once so go At ahead and send once. it. <laughs> uh, Daritin7, $5. Hey, I work for Geek Squad. Not only did both of your videos help me get my job, they helped me every single day with explaining oh. tech to my clients. Thank you. Nice. That's awesome. Great. I'm glad that we are uh, of help to your job and that we helped you get the job yeah. in the first place. That's, that's great. Thank you, Daritin. Damn. We're, we're doing the Lord's work, my friend. We're job, fuck, we're fuck jo yeah. we're job creators. We are. Exactly. <laughs> we, we gave them... Give him that job. Uh, <laughs> Frosted Moon, once again, 10 Canadiers. I do have a question after all. Do you two think it would be a good idea to buy a 1080 Ti now, or should I wait for the 11 slash 20 series? I would wait. Yeah, at this point, just because Ooh. all of the, the scuttlebutt seems to indicate that there's something something coming down the pipeline relatively soon. Could like find a good deal. If, on if, it were, if it were four months or a half year out, then I would say go ahead and buy, but if, We're it's, right in, around the if corner. it's in the next couple months, then yeah. uh, I want to hang out, hang out for a bit, see what happens. You might even find a good deal on a 1080 Ti. Yeah. Once once that series drops, there should be at least a brief period of time where 1080 Ti's are cheaper. Yeah. Before all the stock gets sold out, and then suddenly they become crazy more expensive. Right. Yeah. Uh, center negative, seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. P and K. Uh, oh, that's that's us. That's us. 
From many reviews, it seems Vegas 64 add-in boards should beat a 1080 Founders Edition by 5 to 10%. My Asus Vega 64 runs 10% slower than my 1080 for the win hybrid. Does that seem right to you? Okay. Uh, Asus Vega 64, I know early tests with some cards showed the aftermarket Vega 64 from Asus running slower than the reference design, which was weird. I never followed up on that much, though. It's a BIOS issue, I think. So, yeah. Um, I'm it also sure. really depends on what games you're playing or what tests you're running to compare the two of those to each other. In from from my understanding, although I haven't looked at any specific benchmarks just recently, there should be some applications or games where the Vega 64 wins and some where the 1080 wins. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it would depend on, on what you're testing, which we don't know from your comment, unfortunately. Yeah. That doesn't seem like too outside the bounds of reason for you, uh, for me, but... No, because he's comparing it yeah. to a For the Win hybrid, so... I would exp I, I think that sounds about right. I don't think anything's out of the ordinary there. Yeah. Um, but thank you, Senator Negative. Uh, MB67, $13.37. Paul, I oh. like your Riptide series of videos, and they're giving me ideas for a water loop build with quick disconnects. Thank you. Kyle, the article from Hot Hardware was wrong. The NVIDIA Shield never went on sale. Oh, oh well, lies. Hot Hardware lied to us. Those are filthy I, lies. I, I resent them for it forever. I'll never use any of their great articles ever again on the show. But uh, yeah, um, thank you. I'm really excited about Riptide. In fact, today my plan was to finish everything I needed to finish so I could get more of the tubes installed there. Of course, everything I needed to finish took up pretty much the whole day, so I never got to that. But tomorrow, I'm going to be kicking that off. So I'm going to try to, to tweet some stuff. I, I need to be better at tweeting like, projects like that as I'm going through them and building them. But uh, there should be a, a Part 5 video up very soon, later this week. And uh, hopefully actually get, get some water <laughs> in the water loop, which would be awesome. Nice. Wobble for five dollars. Hey Kyle, whatever happened to the PC build from four hundred dollar PC on Amazon video, August twentieth, two thousand seventeen. Oh, that's a while back. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's almost a year ago. Um, if I never followed up with a video on that actual PC, I know I did a parts selection video where I went on Amazon. I think I might have like I didn't stream it, but I recorded my uh, time on Amazon looking for parts for a four hundred dollar PC. I may not have pieced that build together and actually bought the parts for it, but um, I at least provided uh, the links and prices for the parts that I would have used. I don't know. Um, life happens, and sometimes we set out to do videos, and we have these uh, great ideas, and then sometimes we, we don't always do every single one of them. Like the HTPC <laughs> part two video. Right. No, that's still coming. I'm still going to yes, do that. Yes, of course. Uh, Paul hasn't forgotten about that either. Uh, Nick Duncan, nine dollars ninety nine cents. Cheers! Keep up the good work. Keep up the good donations, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank Nick. you very much, Mr. Duncan. Cheers to you as well. Jordan Lynn, twenty dollars. I have an R Radeon HD sixty nine seventy, and it idles at about seventy degrees C, and will spike over a hundred C and thermally shut down. Wanting a new full build, should I get a ten sixty or ten seventy while waiting for a ten eighty Ti to come down in? to come down, or 11 series to come out. i7, 2600K, only hits 50C. Uh, I, I, hmm. I, Jordan, I think, I think like the previous commenter who asked a similar question, wait. It's, it's good, it's just because we're expecting some stuff pretty soon. Now's the time to wait. Now's a good time to wait, and just see what happens. If you can hold that for a couple more months. Yeah. If you're really, like, can't deal with your current graphics card, then I would say investing in a GTX 1070 right now for 400 bucks. Is, sure. You know, it's not a bad, it's not a bad deal. Yeah. Uh, fun Vasily time. Five Australiers. Hi guys. Any advance on a mini ITX case? Any advice on a mini ITX case? Would love to do a hard tubing project with a small form factor case for both for both performance and visuals. Thanks. Uh, the H200i from NZXT is a pretty solid contender for that. Yeah. I think the Fractal Design. Fractal Nano. Nano S. Uh, yeah. The Nano S yeah. is a really good one. Jade did an amazing water cool build in that. I think that would be a phenomenal option. 
Um, I, I did too. You d oh, you did too. You're right. Hotbox. Hotbox, that's right. My wife's computer, Hotbox, Nano is a S. defined Nano S. Right. It was um, only 60 or 70 bucks. Yes. And, yeah. And it's a, like, if you're going to be water cooling in a Mini ITX build, it's worth looking at some of the Mini ITX cases that are slightly larger. Yeah. So something like a Nan Nano S. You'll have um, more room for shit. It's going to give you a little bit more space to work with. Right. Uh, speed S lays 10 Canadiers when streaming on Twitch, streaming Twitch on a PC, will my GPU 1050 Ti affect my performance during gameplay or does the CPU play a bigger part in this whole streaming biz? Great streams tonight you guys, have a good night. The CPU is going to be mostly uh, what's responsible for your streaming performance so you want to have a good, a strong CPU with enough cores and threads and clock speeds to handle your streaming uh, the graphics card is primarily for, for you, the user, to make sure that you have a decent gaming experience uh, while you're streaming, but also for your for your viewers, because if you're only you know if you're only able to pump out, let's say, 27 frames a second with your 1050 or whatever graphics card you're using, that will also look choppy for your viewers. Um, even though the stream might look good, if your frame rate is bad and you're projecting that to your audience, uh, it's it's going to be a lackluster viewing experience. So it's hard to give too specific of advice without knowing exactly what game you're playing and yeah. resolution and settings exactly. and stuff, stuff like that. But generally speaking right now, the six core options have been better for gaming and streaming at the same time. So a lot of AMD's options, whether you're talking about first gen Ryzen stuff like a, a 1600 or the second gen Ryzen stuff, that six core are good options to go with. Um, your 1050 Ti is gonna affect what max resolution and max settings you can play the game at reasonably as far as what you're seeing. If your CPU has enough overhead available to also encode what you're seeing for your for your viewers, then that's kind of the best of both worlds. So even with a 1050 Ti, if you paired that with a at least a decent quad core with hyper threading processor, uh, but more ideally a six core processor, then you'd probably have a good gaming experience for yourself if you're playing at 1080, as well as a good streaming experience for the people watching. Thank you very much for the donation. Crit Fish, $5. Hey guys, I have an R5 2600X with an Asus X470 Pro motherboard. I upgraded from two 8x8 8 gig uh, sticks, Ripjaws 5 3200, to four 8 gig sticks and dropped a 50 FPS average. Any thoughts? Upgraded from 2x8 to 4x8. Is he saying he dropped like his performance? That's what it sounds like. Dropped. My guess would be then if you, when you upgraded, that somehow your memory settings changed and that you're not actually running your memory at 3200 speed anymore. 2x8 gigs or 4x8 gigs of memory running at 3200 speed should be exactly the same performance if they're all running at 3200 yeah. speed. Right. I'm not sure what the but 50 FPS definitely is for. there are some Ryzen configurations that have a harder time running a four gig or four stick configuration than a two stick configuration. Not enough to so, give you a 50 FPS drop though. That's something else. That's I, something. The way he describes that, it's hard to say. He dropped 50 FPS. I, I'm not sure exactly what oh, he means. Okay. By that, but. Yeah, my guess would be that when you added more memory that your memory speed settings changed somehow. Hmm. Um, yeah, and so, and so definitely those. try doing an A-B comparison with only two sticks versus all four sticks in. Uh, double check and reality check and make sure that you're actually running at the speed, at 3200 speed or not. And also consider that depending on the memory kit that you're using, you might just not be able to run the four stick configuration. You might have to stick with two by eight gig sticks um, if you're focused on overall gaming performance. And overall gaming performance would be more more focused on keeping your memory speed running as fast as possible. Hope, hopefully that helps. Thank you, Crit Fish. Word. Andrew McGough. McGough. Uh, five euros. Hi, Paul, Kyle, don't try to say my name. It's Irish. <laughs> oh, well, we already did. Too late. I'm looking at an EVGA 1080 for the Win 2 or Gigabyte G1 Gaming 1080. Which should I go for? Or the cheapest? 1080 for the Win 2, Gigabyte G1 Gaming, go for the cheapest. Yeah. They're going to perform on par. Yeah, not going to be much of a difference. 
between the two of those. Johnny Woolen, ten dollars. Hello again. Oris X299 Gaming Seven Pro versus an Asus Strix X299 XE for an unraid build with a 7980XE, no overclock, four NVMe drives, two from the PCIe slots, and eight SATA drives. PCIe uh, price is not a factor. Can't decide. Uh, I can't imagine the motherboard choice in ma- this configuration having a huge impact on your overall performance. Yeah. I don't know specifically if there's much connectivity difference between the Aorus X299 Gaming 7 or the Strix X299-XE. Yeah. So as long as you have the same connectivity for both so you can actually connect up all your NVMe drives that you want and all your SATA drives that you want. Then it boils down to cosmetics. Yeah. Honestly, if price is not a a factor, then it would boil down to cosmetics at that point. So, so yeah. Personal preference. I, I hope that helps, Johnny. I, yeah. I, That's the I honest wish I, truth. Though. I wish I could give you more of a direct buy this or buy that. That's as direct as we can get, but, though. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, good luck, though. Uh, Waffle Fur, $5. Here's why VR never took off. It spawned during the mining crunch. It's, it's a good point. It's probably a very legitimate. I think that's partially maybe uh, attributed yeah, to at, it. At the time when people needed maximum GPU processing power, suddenly GPU processing power became exorbitantly overpriced. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the headsets were overpriced, too. That, too. Waffle well, uh, for thank you. Zai Show. Um, yes, uh, Cell, I would say cut off donations. Anyone who's planning to donate, save it for next week, because we are short on time here. Mark Anderson, you're the last donation. Mark Anderson is the last donation. No one donate. You will not be read. Uh, thank you, though. Uh, Zai Show. Zai Show. Five dollars. What's a good laptop for editing on the go with Premiere Pro around the eighteen hundred dollar budget? I am not current on like best editing laptops right now for that budget, that for that price range. Um, go for one of the six core Intel based uh, laptops. There's a decent amount of them out now. You just want one of the. Uh, uh, one that has of the, at least one a ten seventy. Yeah. I'd say. At least a GTX 1070, Max Q or not. Either other, way. Other than that, we're we're not that familiar with specific laptop yeah. model numbers. Right. Or, or we could tell you one way or the other. Guido Salducci, Guido. five dollars. Hey guys, I'm doing a teardown and cleanup of my 1700X build. Do you have any tips for cleaning fans of heavy dust? Also, take my Dara. Take my Daras. I would remove the fans if they're really dusted up, and uh, and spray the crap out of them. You know, do do some compressed air or whatever, what have you. Uh, and then go with like a microfiber cloth or some other cleaning cloth and just just work it in with your fingers and stuff until all the, all the dust is gone. Maybe give it a couple more sprays. Um, just just some good old-fashioned elbow grease will we'll get those fans clean. If you're talking dust only, then Kyle's advice is good. If you've got stuff that's caked on there or whatever that's not coming off, then you really can't get better than like uh, Q-tips with some sort of uh, solvent like a Goo Gone or like just a, a, a isopropyl alcohol mixed with water, like 50-50 blends. And you get that and dip it in and just clean off each blade. It's very, it's very tedious and time-consuming. But Fortunately, I've never had to do that. But yeah, uh, that's, that's really, it's really as far as you can go, I think. Yeah. Good uh, luck, Guido. Yep. Center negative $5 chipping in for the cell processing birthday gift. Fund. Oh, yeah. I like that. What are you buying? What are you getting for cell? Stripper. Stripper. Sounds good. <laughs> we, we only have five dollars to Here's your stripper. Here's your five dollars. Very strippers. inexpensive stripper. <laughs> Chris Reese, FFA, Chris. nine dollars ninety nine cents. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all the incredible content. Wishing you nothing but success in the oh, future. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. Chris. Appreciate it. That's lovely. And with your ten bucks, You're a lovely person. We will definitely succeed. There's no way we cannot. Uh, Andrew Schweier, Andrew. 10 Canadiers. Thanks for unboxing it. Best of luck to you. Maybe one day I'll send a bottle of Sambuca, Ooh, uh, one Sambuca. of my favorite liqueurs or liquors. Uh, yeah, send us some liquor. We wouldn't wouldn't say no. Who, like we could we could get totally smashed on the show. Won't turn you down. It's never happened before. Thanks for the 6600K. Yeah. Bipolar Bear HD, $5. Thank you, Kyle and Paul. Your videos helped me build my first PC and helped start my path into computer science degree. Ooh. It's my computer science degree. You two are awesome. That's damn. You'll probably very soon know more than us then. Yeah. Because neither of us have that, any of that We did formal, not go to school for computing training. at all. Nope. In any sense. So. Uh, but good luck to you with your degree. Yeah, that's I'm glad awesome. we glad we could help. 
Hell yeah. Uh, Waste in Space, 20 great British pounds. Long-term fan and once in a blue moon, I get to catch you guys live. Thanks well, thank for you. the entertainment from you both. That Riptide build is going to be amazing. Good luck getting things to fit. <laughs> no epic water cool build would be without it, its yeah. issues. That's that amen to that. That's so true. I'm, That's so I'm, true. I'm really so ready for tomorrow and just to put... Going to finish it off? Put the rest of the Most, stuff together less. and in the thing that I know yeah. can just do, go together. And I'm pretty sure I've got everything right. figured out as far as those little details of where things go and everything. I just need to get the tubing worked out and stuff. So, yeah. Nice. Hopefully tomorrow will be fun. Sweet. All right. And then next up we've got... Micah Carter. Micah Carter. $5. Says, hey guys, planning a rebuild that will be able to game stream in 3D model. Is this adequate or would you change with the PC part picker list link? Can you, can you copy that? I'm Kyle's doing it. Copy that. I'm doing it. In the meantime, DRM7UV, $12.1234. Salute, gentlemen. To both and all loyal fans and watchers. Love the show. Thank you, DRM. We agree. And salute, uh, back, back to you. Oh, yeah. What do you say? Micah, your system's great. Uh, Ryzen 7 2700X and a GTX 1070 Ti. You're golden. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've got 16 gigs of RAM. I think that's plenty. You've got good solid state representation here. A decent case. A really good case to find R6. So you've even got a mic. A mic, yeah. And a stream deck and everything. You're good, man. This is a $2,300 system thereabouts. and But it includes a lot of peripherals and stuff like that that, that people don't often include. So True. That, that's, that's Maybe good. a $2,000 system still. That's a great that's, setup. That's going to last you a while. Yeah. Uh, who are we on now? Wasted Space? Yes, waste in space. Great British pounds. A more serious question. Currently running a 5820K, 32 gigs of RAM, 1080 Ti. I'm a content creator, starting to see performance hits streaming. Surprisingly, do I go 8700K or 7820X for Premiere performance, for Premiere Pro performance and streaming? Huh. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, because you've already got a 5820K, which is not. Bad. I'm kind of surprised, actually, that you're seeing running into streaming performance, performance issues. It's maybe um, check, double check your streaming perform or your streaming settings to see if that's really the case because you should be totally golden with those specs. Streaming, totally golden. There's no reason you need to upgrade unless you're doing some crazy like 4K streaming at yeah, ultra like high bit rates at 60 FPS. There's no reason. I I, I can't see it. So. Double check your stream settings, and let's say you had a weaker CPU and it was definitely time for you to upgrade, I would wait till the 9th gen core CPUs come out before you pull the trigger on an 87K, because <clears throat> yeah. depending on the price, you might be more drawn to an 8 core and CPU. Not, and or... honestly, for what you're doing, if you're a content creator, 8700K or 7820X, I feel like you get better bang for your buck with than the either of those with the, with the 2700 the, the uh, Ryzen? X. Yeah, with the yeah. Ryzen. Yeah. Because the 8-core Ryzens are... Oh, they're great for that. You can get set up for really... Really good streaming, really good... A lot less money than you have to pay for the Intel yeah. high-end desktop stuff. Right. So, yeah. B B450 boards are right around the corner. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Mark also, Anderson... Also, people in chat recommend you to check the internet, because it might be lag spikes that's causing those issues. Yeah, that's true. Um, with, uh, with streaming. Yeah. Yeah, that does. It seems like you have a very powerful system for doing what you're doing with six cores and everything. It you shouldn't should, be. You should be okay. Yeah. Especially with the 1080 Ti and especially Absolutely. with that much memory. Yeah. Mark Anderson, five Australiers. You guys playing much VR these days? Haven't touched it in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. To be honest, um, I feel like once VR, if VR gains more mainstream appeal, then we might be be doing more content on it. But for now, it's a very niche category that I feel like very niche channels are covering, like VR channels will cover I keep, like, I like, keep thinking with my HTPC build, like, oh, I want to get this set up so the VR setup is ready to go out here and I can play it. Yeah. But I haven't gotten that far. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not much, but that's not to say I don't want to. Yeah, right. I play VR a lot more so when you do time. when you do jump into it and you have a good time, it's like, wow, that was such a cool experience. Yeah. So... And I'm sure VR games have come so far since we, like, last played it Yeah, seriously. there's probably been some advancements yeah. we need to check in on. All right. Johnson's? Uh, quick, couple quick Johnson's. I've only got one, it looks like. I've only got a couple. One additional. 
Uh, from Blair. Blair G from Australia. Oh my goodness. BG. All the way from Australia, got the silver black tri blend yo. shirt. Johnson to you. Yeah. Thank you for your order. A Johnson to Joseph W for picking up a Bitwit Gaming desk mat. J Dubs. Absolutely. Thank and you, thank you. Thank you very much. And then uh, Blair G. That's a double Johnson. That's a double Johnson. Yes. Uh, you picked up a Bitwit Gray logo black tri blend T-shirt. Glorious. Beautiful. And then and finally, you should you should get those shipments together, Blair, and you might get a little bit of a refund on your shipping too. And then we got Brian G. Oh, same initials as Blair. Maybe you and Blair should should hook up. You know, maybe this is this is fate. Brian's uh, from Texas, though. Brian's from Texas. Yeah, they can make it work. I've seen crazier love stories. Still a better love story than Twilight. CPU cooler gaming desk mat. You got the 90 centimeter one. Primo. Thank you guys so much. Johnson to all y'all. Glorious. All right. Guys, that wraps up for Awesome Hardware episode 155. Do we um, have a Twitch raid? We're going to do a Twitch raid in just a second, but before that, if you uh, enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up button. If there's somebody out there who wants to make timestamps and post those in the comments, I will be monitoring that, and I will uh, pin your comment to the top, and you'll get much notoriety and fame. Probably lots of the money and the power and the women and all that stuff, too. Oh, yeah. And we're going to do a Twitch raid here. So if you're watching us live and you want to go and raid somebody else and give them a good time, we are raiding Banzai Baby. Yes. So go to twitch.tv slash Banzai Baby. That's B-A-N-Z-A-I-B-A-B-Y. And she's doing a, and, a real uh, talk and chill stream. She's making food. She's making food. She's it in the kitchen. delicious. She's wearing a Twitch branded apron. Yeah. That's more than enough reason to check her out. So at least. over there in creative. She has 52 viewers right now. I would like to see us blow her mind with, with over 300 viewers at the very least. So everybody go, go and raid Banzai Baby. Thank raid the you shit all out of her. so much for watching this episode of Awesome Hardware. Do it! We'll be back with more content later this week. Do it! And, oh yeah, and we'll be at, uh, at, at, at Comic Con this weekend. Saturday at 4. On Saturday at 4. So come see you there. Us. Come join us there. At the okay. PC gaming area. All right, bye, guys. Bye.